going to be trying to remove, uh, reinstall, and in the middle of all that, rebuild the distributor on this pickup over here. I have all the parts inside. <clears throat> but in order to do that, I first have to take the distributor cap off. These wires, I mark them on these things. I would recommend everyone do this. If you have an old Chevy or something, you get these little wire uh, markers and you put them on each wire. It makes it a whole lot easier. So you just pull them all off. Bam, 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 bam. You know, you can note the order beforehand, but I already did that. And you can put them back on. Find each wire very easy. It makes R and R in your distributor cap kick. Then after that's all off, you can just get the, was it, 732nds on this model. And there's two screws, one on each side. They're both hidden, one over here, one on the other side. And you can back those off and get your cap off. Like so. Distributor cap is off. I always mark number one on my cap too faintly. And I almost think that this thing has landed on number one with the engine off. I have to check the timing mark, but what a weird deal that is. That ne almost never happens. And uh, where's number one? It's close. I don't know. Yeah, it's up there. Yep. Very close. That's awesome. Because when your timing mark is on cylinder, I mean, when you know that big V in the timing? I mean, you can't even see it. This camera sucks. But there's a big mark in your timing mark on your uh, front cover. And then it has to line to the... It's a big cutout, rather. And it lines to the mark in the balancer. When that's lined up, you can either be on number one. Or I think you could be on like six or something. It points like the opposite direction. Because the crank turns twice for every one revolution of the camshaft and the distributor runs off the camshaft so keep that in mind too when you take one of these things out I used to not even line up that rotor I used to just wherever wherever it fell I marked it on the um, I marked it on this little copper piece where it was and I just line it up in the same spot that's how I used to do it back in the day but now I line it up top of that center on one it seems to go in easier but let me go rotate or crank it is a 5 8 and you usually wind up getting caught up on the fan and whatnot. And a uh, ratchet. Choose the crappy craftsman one. And just bump it over. It's always a pain in the ass to get this on there blind, but I think I'm in the middle. And then just rotate your crank. Just keep on pushing down on your ratchet until the timing mark is lined up to the big V. This thing turns like butter, but if you see your mark, see it? It's lined up good enough. And note where that rotor is kind of pointing. It kind of points like directly to the coil on here. And that's number one. I'll mark it on the uh, that little copper piece. We're putting a whole new housing in this thing and rebuilding that distributor. Alright, after that's done, I just want to kind of know the position of the ignition module. It kind of goes on an angle. Like this, keep an eye on that. You know, it goes kind of over here. Because I'm not going to mark the bottom of it because I'm probably changing the housing on this. I'm just going to swap over our electronics. And the easiest way to get that, well I put a stud in this, I made a video on that. Easiest way to get to that bolt though on a Chevy, don't buy a distributor wrench. Just get ratchet, long extension, and a 916 crow's foot. And it works a hell of a lot better than any distributor wrench for a throttle body injection engine. And you just get it on there, find it somewhere underneath there. On this side, passenger side. I don't have a camera man, so sorry if I go out of frame, people bitch about that stuff. And yeah, we'll get it in a minute. There's also two electrical connectors in the back of the ignition module. So make sure you disconnect those. One's a four pin that goes to the computer and one's a two pin that goes to the coil. Somewhere over there, coil. But now we're just getting this. This is a stud kit, so it actually makes it easier to get it out some sense 
I just have a nut on it. And they can get it by hand. Man, this thing is unbelievably hot and it's been running for about two seconds. Hot out here, buddy. Fun, huh? Bam. That's that. That's the nut. Then you have a clamp. That might be tricky to get to. Take that clamp off. There we go. Clamp. This thing looks a little... What the hell? Look at that. It doesn't look right. I don't know. But that's over there. That's all we have. So we're reusing that. And let's try to take this thing out. See, when you take it out, you see the rotor move? It always does that. Let me just pull up straight. And... Distributor. If you don't knock it around, I'm getting oil all over my battery, but it's junk anyway. If you don't move it around, you won't knock the uh, drive gear so bad around it. Let's go take this thing apart and rebuild it. So already in about two seconds, I could tell that rebuilding this is going to fix it. Because when you turn this rotor, the distributor, first of all, turns terrible. It's all notchy. And I feel very minimum magnetic pulses from this star. It has a couple ones that hit and a couple ones that are dead. So it needs a new shaft, which we have. The play is not too bad. The end play. But it's tight. Should spin very smooth. So we're going to put a whole new housing on it. And uh, everything else will be okay. This one actually has a part number on it. You see the other housing I have doesn't have a part number. These get all corroded and nasty. Look at all the corrosion on it. Alright. Well, without putting oil everywhere. Gear looks good. Gear looks very good. So we'll use that. And, uh, yeah. We'll be up and running, hopefully. Within a couple hours or so. Old gaskets, this freaking nasty. I think it was even leaking. You can't even see it. There's the gasket over there. We need a cameraman. Look, this thing is so tight. If you were here to spin that, bad dude. All right, let me get my parts. I'm excited now. This is gonna do something. It's bad. I'm telling you, this thing has what 165 or something on it. Way past done. Done. It's done. Build a new one. We built a new one in the ghetto wagon back in 2008, I think, before I moved here. Yeah, I think it was 2008. It was broken for a couple months. Because it, I think actually, well you saw it in my other videos, I believe the star, it stretched and it started banging on these little magnetic poles on the side. So it made a shitload of noise. <laughs> Sounded like a grinder hitting something. Alright, let's get our parts. Stop talking. I'm excited. This is going to make this thing run good. I know it. So this is what we're changing. It's a new housing. A new magnetic piece. We're going to reuse this. We're going to reuse the pole, whatever the heck it is. We're going to reuse the pickup coil. Because it only has 30,000 miles on it. We took this apart 30,000 miles ago and it was in rough shape. But I threw it back together. Uh, I'm going to reuse this, the module, because it's fairly new. It has about 30,000 on it. We're going to put new uh, paste on it. But the first thing we're going to do, because we've got to hammer this gear out with a roll pin punch. These are kind of hard to find, but if you have rifles, um, real easy to get. They feel like AR-15s and stuff. So if you live in a liberal northeast you're probably not going to be able to find it or if you get that shipped to your house the uh, police will show up you'll have a military style assault rifle which is a bunch of bullshit alright so this is the same length it looks like yeah we're going to take this out so we don't damage it first I don't know what size it is the screws always get rusty look at that star though beat up this thing's going to rip when it's done you get these little ignition module screws off they are, I think, 7.30 seconds. It might be metric. Just don't lose them, although I do have spares. I'd really like to clean these up and, you know, do something to it. At least we got our tailgate workbench. It's the best part about owning a pickup. Is that when you have a project going on, you just do it in the bed. When you don't have a workbench, like I don't, living in a condo. 
Alright. People are walking by looking at me crazy. Alright, so there's one screw. I gotta tell you, they get very rusty. I should probably buy new ones. Just gonna clean those up and grease them, I guess. And I can try to get out this one too. I'm not gonna bore you, I'm just gonna burn up memory. Get that out. You can see the remaining of our heatsink paste, which is almost nothing. And those that just dries up and um, it burns up. That's just a little tab to get the pick up coil off. These sometimes corrode, this one's clean. And that's clean over there. I believe I put dielectric grease in there, which is a good idea. So that is off. That's gonna be reused. And now we can pop this roll pin out. And we're gonna put a new roll pin in. This one's been reused a couple times. This thing is so bad. Unbelievable. I see this little notch in the gear, this little hole. That lines up the ignition rotor. See the slight uh, slice in it? The rotor points this way. So when you put it, take it apart and put it back together, make sure that lines up with the ignition rotor. The tip of the rotor, not the back half of it. That's very important. So let's put it on a piece of wood like so. Elevate it, you know, it's locked in there good. And uh, tap out that pin. See? It's coming right out. take the gear off which is probably stuck on yep I'll get it off and uh, get the shaft out yeah, if this thing's stuck you just take a punch and just hit it right here whoops hit it right over here and then it'll drive it out because you're reusing all this crap anyway as long as you don't screw up the gear you're fine one little whack it's off alright so the deal is after you get that off you have a washer which looks original. We're gonna put a new one on. We have this piece, which is a little worn. We have a new one, so I'm gonna throw that on. And then that's that's it. This little piece that sits inside the distributor. And those little notches. And then you just pop this thing right through. Sometimes see I clean this, this gets all oil baked over here with time. It gets very, 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 very hard to remove. But see, this thing's all rusted and nasty, and it's a crack. See that huge crack going through it, the bottom. That's no good. It's not good at all. And there's a couple of little cracks in it over here. It's junk. So now you have this little clip that you pop out. Try to be careful. If you can save it, it's great. If not, whatever. Our pickup coil is not looking too hot either. I don't know. We might change that. I don't know. I see it like coming apart. But we gotta get this little clippy do out. And you see how that is with the little ridged edge? That's how it goes on. Don't put it upside down. See? There's two different ways you can put that clip on. And the teeth go up. So you get that thing out of the way. And note the position of the copper piece because we marked that with the distributor rotor. To get this clip off, it's tricky. You have to use a combination of pliers, screwdrivers, a little pick tool. I just keep working it. I'm getting it over here. It'll come off. It's a trick. The best thing to do is just put these on here. Go bam. It squares it. And it's off. So that's that. Look at this pickup coil, man. The shield is all screwed up on it. And that's not very old. I have a new one inside, but I'm probably going to reuse this one. It's still good. A small roll pin that holds this whole little thing together. So you just stick your screwdriver between it, turn it, and you can work it off. And then show you on camera, but it comes right off. I can't do this crap in real time. While this may work, this does look pretty crappy to me. I think I'm just going to put the new one on. Yeah. I don't know, I don't want to risk it. If this thing goes bad, this truck's dead in the water. When the pickup coil goes, it controls the injectors. So, it's done. I mean, done. 
It might run a little bit, but it's gonna run pretty bad. So let me go find that part, which sucks, it's buried. Well, I hope not. And uh, we're gonna go dremel up this little pole piece, clean up this. See, I just screwed with this, one of these, what wire was it, this wire? Yeah, the, the green wire, and look, comes right off. So that should be soldered to it somehow. Or wrapped with the coil, I believe. Oh, this is one step close to failure. And this was not very old. Maybe 2006, 2007. And the original one looked pretty damn bad, too. But that doesn't have too many miles on it. I found this in my house in about two seconds. And people look down upon people who hoard. I think they're the jackass. You should always have extra stuff. New. Clean up all your screws as best as you can. Clean up these little contact areas. I don't know if this has to ground through here or not. I'm not sure, but I always clean them up as best as I can. And you'll be good to go. He has done those nows and thens. Every module goes on last. So we're going to start assembling this. A lot of these housings, if you just bought one, which I don't even think you can really find one anymore for a good price, but they don't have a pin, so you buy a roll pin. Don't even bother reusing that one. Let's go to the hardware store. I forget the size. I bought a ton of them. And then it goes in that square hole. You have to square it off one. And then it goes on like so. And then start building it. Tip, when you screw with that roll pin, it should just stick out a little bit. But it shouldn't stick out so much that when you put the pickup coil on it, and you look at it, the pickup coil is higher on the roll pin side than an adjacent side. Then you want to tap it down some more, like I just did. You don't want it poking into the pickup coil. Now our pickup coil fits nice before it was lifted up over here just a little bit. It's perfect now. So let's leave that like that, wrap it around this way, the wire. And we can put the copper piece on and the new clip. This got a little bent up, so I hammered and dollied it flat. But I didn't make a video of it. I used two hammers, very tricky. Put a hammer up like this. I'm a genius. Alright, that's on like that. I could go more crazy and knock this out and that out, but I'm not doing that. It's good enough. I always paint the clip because it rusts. Uh, you see the old one, I don't know, oh here it is. They got worse than this though. So I just put throw a little black paint on it, it makes it last a lot longer. Cause those can split and the whole thing falls apart. It has happened in past time. Well not for me, but other people. So let's go throw the clip on. Remember that side faces up. And use a 15 millimeter socket and just tap it on. This bam. You can't show up the 15 millimeter. Fits right on it, so I'm just gonna tap it on. Put the distributor on a block of wood. I don't hammer it so much or else you break the pickup coil. That's down there good though. Almost too much. Oh well. Now you can pop this thing back in. And just remember that your gear has to line up. That dot to dot. Here's some oil. New oil. This residual is in the container. And I'm just going to lube the shit out of the shaft before I put it all back together. See, I don't know if this piece goes bad because I, I put a new piece on, I have two of them, and it seems like the magnetic pulse is stronger. I don't know. It's definitely better than what it was. You do feel it, dude, 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 dude. I don't know. Maybe those go bad and lose their mag- their- because that's maybe like a positive magnet and it's a negative magnet. I don't know if they can lose it with time and heat. I don't know. So, let's get this job done. Oh, you had a little spill. All lubed up. Lube that, lube this, that goes on first. Put the shim on, this is a brand new shim. Put the gear on, make sure the gear lines up with the slot. And a little dimple. And put the roll pin in. Module last, remember. And then put that pin in with a roll pin punch. Now my ears hurt from the echoing, but I think that's in. They sometimes break on Fords. I don't know. 
Hopefully this one doesn't break. Should be good to go. Let's put the module back in. Some silicon heatsink compound. Then put the module back on. Coat it over here. Something like that. Should have went a little lighter on it. Here's the trick. Hopefully it's in frame. You just wrap it around. Line it up with the little holes. And you drop it. So then you put your screws in. Brand new. Sure feels heavy. I think that's everything. Now we just have to wipe off all this excess grease crap. And uh, put it back in the hole. Rebuilt. For half the price of a new one. Maybe even a quarter. Right, I think this piece of crap's in now finally. That's about right pointing over there. I have a couple aids. You can use the old housing if the oil pump drive turned and you line it up correctly. Then I have an old distributor cap and I marked the uh, the numbers and it's kind of pointing to one now. And what's pointing towards eight? I think we're okay. Clamp it and bolt it. This thing looks really warped though, I'm telling you. I have to grab one from the junkyard to see what it looks like. Maybe it's supposed to be like that. Well, this concludes this stupid video. Because, uh, I think a problem is the distributor housing. Something's wrong with it. Because it's... They tighten the clamp and it's still moving. So, it's either not being seated all the way down. Or it's bottoming out. When it shouldn't be. So, we're going to have to figure out why that is. Damn it. I forgot there was a washer underneath there and someone was looking out and the washer didn't fall down the hole. Yeah, this is my thought. I think this housing I have is bad. You see this distance is flat. On that one I noticed it's shallower than it is. So when I put the clamp on, there's not enough meat for it to grab. So I have to use a different housing, which I have. And this housing I bought off eBay is a piece of shit, which I'm not too happy about. Yeah, so how's that for a bummer? I put the old housing in, if it's in fine. Take it apart again. Maybe I'm just gonna reuse the old housing. It wasn't that bad, but I have to clean the crap out of it. That's why we hoard. See, look how fat that is. Look how skinny this is. We're gonna measure it in millimeters since I suck at the my own way of measuring it. It's like... No, we're not in millimeters. This is freaking inches. We got a good about like eight millimeters, and this see it's like ten millimeters, ten. And this is what? See what I'm saying? It's fucked up. It's not machine right. And this is okay. Here to here is okay, but there to there is not. You see it right there. On freaking real, man. So we're going to reuse this housing. I have another one, but I'm going to clean this shit up with brake cleaner. It's not that worn out. And throw this thing back in. And I don't know what to do with that. Wasted $35. And where's the towing guy? Is he going to tow away your truck? It's on the street. Unbelievable, man. Quality of new parts. There is no quality. Hopefully I can get my money back for this. It's been like a month on eBay. We're gonna have to go bitch the guy. I wonder how many more parts I have in my collection that I bought MOS that are just no good. I know I'll find something. So I'm done with it. I'm not buying parts anymore unless I'm immediately using them.